Welcome to our quick review of the Urban Forest Metrics tool being used as a workflow application. By that we mean it helps organize the work we would recommend to a client. It helps put that into proposals and then allows approval and tracking that approval and then divvying up the work after that's been approved so that people executing the work can go ahead and know what is the highest priority to do at that moment. So that's the particular use case we're going to be showing in this demonstration. We have other demonstrations that will show particularly how to do an inventory or for arborists who wish to use it as a diagnosis tool or a tree healthcare record system. So we'll also be talking about our, our normal version of urban forest metrics. This is the most common installation and the only difference between that and our enterprise version is it doesn't have a bunch of bells and whistles like the financials, invoicing, dunning, um, and scheduling for large teams when you're juggling eight or nine different tree service teams. Um, so we're going to concentrate on the, on the simpler version here. So uh, we'll start with walking up to a tree and opening up the record and determining what we need to do with that tree. How we would do that is we would click on the nearest tree button if that tree was already in our system. We would walk up to uh, the place where we were actually doing our diagnosis, click on nearest tree, and up would pop the correct record. Um, I'm manually just changing to a different tree here. And we would be able to look at the history of the tree with the different visits down here. We could create a new visit. Here's one for today. And you'll note that in the previous visit, there was some information about a treatment and about risk. And here in today's visit, we haven't entered anything, so none of these boxes are checked off. But more particularly for the purposes of putting together some work, we would be using this box here, the new service box. And we just go ahead and click on that, and we could choose a particular thing that we're going to recommend for this tree, let's say an aphid spray. And we could put in some notes, and we could also use voice notes by speaking into our device and it will just transcribe that into text, and we can take a picture, lots of additional stuff, and all of this is customizable. We can click on more information on this task, and everything here can be changed, things added to, um, to your particular workflow. So this is how we would create work, and we might have several different trees we're walking among, and this one doesn't have a species, I'll just add a species, I'll add a service. Let's see, for this one, we're going to do something about Diplodia. And over the course of visiting a site, you might be spending half an hour with one item, no items, half a dozen items for different trees. Ultimately, we'll put that into a proposal. And we do that by going to the location screen and saying, let's add all the tasks that we've been putting in into a proposal. And here we see those two tasks that we just put in. So yes, two tasks have been added to this proposal. And when we click on it, we see them. And it says approved no. Um, and that's because we haven't, no one's indicated that the client is saying, yes, please do this. And that can be done in several ways. And this is part of that customization thing that comes in with different firms. Um, it might be that I am doing a consultation out in the field with the landowner sitting next to me. And at the point where we've produced this proposal, we might just be able to go ahead and output it. And I can send it by PDF, by email, I can print it out. Let's say I might have a printer in my truck, one of those air print printers, you can print directly from my device. Or I just might view the proposal and show it to the fellow. And here we see these things. Those are the things that we've recommended that they do. And they may say, yeah, let's go ahead and approve this. And if so, they can just click on this. And if I were showing this to you on a mobile device, this would actually be a signature box. I could use my finger to actually sign it or just click the button and say, okay, this fellow approved. So now this proposal has been moved from the proposed tab to the approved tab. And that's how we're keeping track of work. We have proposals, which are aggregates of different tasks. And those proposals have different statuses. They are just merely proposals or they've been approved or they've been done. Here's where we would see finished work. And right now we haven't marked anything as finished, so there's nothing there. This also allows us to 
choose to invoice finished work. And we can similarly send those out with a PDF, nice, neat PDFs with your logo and any boilerplate information you require. Um, so that's, that's the proposal process, um, the approval process. And once things are approved, we call them, we generally call them work orders. And with the enterprise version of the software, you'll see that we have something called the scheduling hopper and that allows us to take all of the tasks across all of our clients and divvy them up, not necessarily all by work order, but it might be that all of the Apple sprays are going to be done in the same week. So we might pull all the Apple sprays from all of the clients and assign them to one person with one truck with a particular chemical in it. Um, so you can see how that can be rather efficient if you have that much larger scale of operation. One thing to note uh, is that the way we deploy this is well, really almost always customized because firms are more different from each other than they even think they are. So the workflow particularly is different. You, even if you change staff in the back office, you might change your workflow. If you have an extra half-time person, you might radically need to change how you shift papers and what becomes electronic and so on. So uh, we're sensitive to that. And the way that we deploy this, we first give a generic version to the client and then they test it out. And invariably there's all sorts of little edges and rough spots where they don't work that way. So we change it and it's pretty simple. We've done this a lot. Uh, so we make it pretty slick for that particular user. It works on Macs and PCs and iPads, iPhones, iOS devices. It doesn't work on Android. Um, and we can also deploy it in the cloud so everyone can use it at the same time. And it, there's a file up on the internet. Or we can have it on a server at your office, or we can even just have it on the computer. This one version that I'm showing you right now just exists on my computer and I can send it to another device or another computer. So that again is something that really varies from firm to firm how they need to deploy things. Um, so we, we pretty much have it covered there. And with that, thank you for watching. Uh, we have additional videos, both in terms of demonstrations of different types of firms using it differently, and also uh, individual training videos that will show you how to do some very specific tasks. It might give you a better impression of how things actually work operationally.